Good morning, my name is Guy, and thanks for stopping back. This morning I'm going to start my dining room table build, and for those who have been keeping score, I'm going with design B, which is this one right here. Obviously this is just a model. You're not going to be eating at this. So um, this has a bent lamination for the trussle design on the bottom. Um, the top is going to be veneered. It should be pretty interesting. There's some interesting joinery I've got to accomplish on this. This is one of the legs. Obviously there's going to be four of them. Four of them. One, two, three, four. Yes, four legs. And uh, these are three inch solid walnut. Uh, it's, it's octagonal in design. There's a turning on the bottom. There's actually an eight way taper here on the bottom. These were a lot of fun to build. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Well, these are the slabs that I have to make the leg blanks out of. They need to be a full three inches square. Now, I looked high and low for these locally, but I couldn't find them. And when I did find something that was almost suitable, it was almost $18 a board foot, which is just insane pricing. So I did some searching on the Internet, and then I said to myself, well, what should I really do here? i got to find this lumber pretty fast because I need to make this table. So I contacted Matt Cremona, and believe it or not, he had these just laying around. Uh, I contacted him, got the uh, pricing from him, and he sent them to me, and, and these are just beautiful. I should be able to get five legs out of here. I know I can get four. Uh, these are a little bit better than 12 quarter. They're almost 13 quarter. So the first thing I need to do is get the bark off of them. Now that I've got the bark off the sides and I've got some clean end grain here, I really want to take a look at how this grain was on these, these uh, blanks. So I've got a square here. I need three, and a, three inches square. This is three and an eighth. Um, if you look at this, the grain is running this way on the legs. And what I want to do is I want that grain to be going corner to corner across. That'll uh, help, help not completely, but eliminate some of the face grain that's going to be on those legs, and I don't want cathedrals on them. So, got one there. Just going to draw this out. And I've got another one on this side. I want to give myself a little extra room on these because I'm going to be milling them twice. There we go. So I just need to do the other one and then take these over to the bandsaw and cut out the rough blanks. Before I do anything else, I want to cut a 45 degree angle off of here. Uh, I'm just going to cut a half inch from either side on this. I've got, again, my blade tipped at 45 degrees. I'm just going to go ahead and make these cuts on all four corners. I'm getting ready to make this jig and it doesn't have to be perfect. I know I want it to be about the taper to start about five inches. I'm just gonna take that and draw a line to give me a little visual reference.
Now on the other side, I know I want to be about a sixteenth inch from that end. So I can take this, line it up, so that mark I just made there is on the bottom down here. And I'm just going to eyeball where the blade is going to meet the other side of that. And then I can take my fence here. And I like to use CA glue for a lot of my jigs. It just makes life a lot easier. I'm just going to hold that down and put that on there against there. Rub it a little bit. Alright. And that's on there. Now I need to do the same thing to this. Which is my stop for the end. And I'm just going to put that on there. And again, rub a little bit back and forth. And in about five minutes, this will set up. And then I'll go in from the other side and put some screws up. So I've got those there. And I'm going to be putting a toggle clamp on here to hold everything down. I'm going to use one of the cutoffs from the legs. And again, a little bit of CA glue or the Nexabond. And I'll put that on here like this. And just slide it around about as far forward as I can get it. And I'm going to let that sit for a little bit again for about five minutes or so and this will be set up and then I'll be able to put a couple screws in from underneath just to hold everything in place to make sure it doesn't slip around. I bet you wonder what I'm doing over here at my band saw and my table saw and the answer is pretty simple. I kind of screwed up the uh, blade will not go high enough to cut all the way through this. Not a big deal. I'll just cut it on my band saw. I've got it set up and uh, I just need a, the jig is backwards, but again, not a big deal. And I just need to push it through. Well, after getting the uh, eight-sided taper here cleaned up with the hand plane, there's going to be a turning here. It's going to be about three inches or so right here. So I'm going to reference off the top of the leg, and I've got the blade raised up just a sixteenth of an inch, and I just want to cut just all the way around here to give myself a nice crisp line to start with. I've got one of the leg blanks chucked up in my lathe and I've got the marks. This is obviously where I cut the, the, the shoulder before. This is going to be the bottom of it. It's just going to be a, a fillet on the bottom with kind of a goblet or a vase shape in the middle. And then um, that's about it. I'm not the world's best at turning, so don't take this as a tutorial. I'll just show you how it ends up. So this is what I'm looking for. Again, nothing too fancy. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up with a little sandpaper and then do the other three. So that's it for this episode. Uh, next time we're working on the rails and some of the joinery, uh, which again is going to be a lot of fun. The legs are complete. Now I've got to ask you guys a question. Uh, this is the prototype leg I built to show my wife. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer to the camera here. Well this is the prototype leg and uh, this is what the other legs were built off of. 
Now on this one here, we've got the same octagonal shape on the top. But if you notice on this one, I don't know if you can see on the camera, there's some flutes that run on this octa octagonal side here. I don't know if you can see, I'm going to bring it in a little bit closer. It didn't come out very well on this demo piece, but then again, it's just a demo to get an idea of the look. I'd like to know what you guys think, um, whether or not I should put these on. I've got plenty of time to think about it before I do the final assembly on this. And um, anyways, I thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, thanks again for watching, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Again, it means a lot to me if you do, and you won't miss any more of this build. Thanks for watching.